Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, worship service. Uh, the title of today's message is Daniel Resolved Not to Defy Himself. The key verse is verse 8. Uh, let's read this verse together. Let's go. But Daniel resolved not to defy himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defy himself this way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you so much for granting us this chance to study the book of Daniel. May you bless us that as we study this book, we may pick up Daniel's spirit, Daniel's decision, Daniel's devotion to you, so that we too, in this very confusing generation, rise as powerful spiritual leaders, Lord. May you bless this worship service from the beginning to the end. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. First, the Lord delivered Jehoiakim into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Look at verses 1 and 2. It starts, In the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. In the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah was 605 B.C. In 612 B.C., the Babylonians conquered Nineveh, the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. But the Assyrian Empire, with the help of the Egyptian Empire, settled in Haran, modern-day Syria. Since then, there was war between the Babylonian Empire and the Assyrian Empire in Haran. The Egyptian army, under their pharaoh Neko, was on their way to Haran to join in this war. They asked Josiah, king of Judah, uh, 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 for permission to pass through the territory of Judah, but he rejected it. Instead, he marched against them and fought in the plain of Megiddo. There, Josiah was killed. People buried him and appointed Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, king, and he reigned three months. Three months later, Nico, a uh, pharaoh of Egypt, the, on the way back to Egypt, uh, dropped by and deposed him and uh, appointed uh, the Eliakim, uh, another son of Josiah, as king in uh, Judah. In 605 BC, the two empires had a final battle near Carchemish in Haran on the banks of the Euphrates. And the Babylonians, under the leadership of their uh, crown prince Nebuchadnezzar, defeated them. Thus, the Assyrian Empire was gone forever, and Nuko was also defeated. At this battle, the Babylonians killed all the Egyptian soldiers that not even one soldier escaped to his own country. Since then, the Egyptian Empire never came out of its own territory again, losing its influence in the Palestinian area. The same year Nebuchadnezzar was enthroned and in that ascension year, he marched out against the Palestine area. That was in the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. At that time, Jehoiakim surrendered without fighting and became the vessel of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar took some of the people of Judah to Babylon. That was the first deportation, 605 BC. And among them was Daniel. In 601 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, with his uh, whole army, uh, uh, marched to Egypt. And there, both armies suffered losses. When Jehoiakim, king of Judah, heard, about, uh, heard this, he changed his mind and rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. Then, around the end of, uh, then uh, Nebuchadnezzar and his army came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the people of Judah fought against them. Around the end of 598 BC, Jehoiakim died, and his son Jehoiachin succeeded him as king and reigned for three months and ten days. 
The next year, in, 19, in 597 BC, the city fell in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonians removed all the treasures from the Jerusalem temple and from the royal palace and took away all the gold articles of the temple. Jehoiachin was taken to Babylon together with many other officers and leading men, fighting men, the uh, craftsmen and artisans. Among them was Ezekiel. That was the second deportation, 597 BC. Nebuchadnezzar the, uh, the made the Mathaniah, Jehoiachin's uncle, king in, in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. Eight years later, at Zedekiah's rebellion, Nebuchadnezzar marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. Then, in 586 BC, the Jerusalem was Jerusalem fell in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonians destroyed the Jerusalem walls, the Jerusalem temple, and killed so many, and took most people to Babylon. That was the third deportation, 586 BC. Thus, the end of the monarchy in Israel, the end of the uh, first temple period. That was the beginning of the exile in Babylon, which lasted for 70 years until the temple was rebuilt in 516 BC, as uh, the prophet Jeremiah had prophesied. It was God's temple. It was God's people. Then, why? Did such a terrible tragedy happen to Judah, God's chosen people? Why should God's temple be destroyed by the Gentiles like this? It was not because of their failure in politics that instead of allying with the Babylonians, they allied with the Egyptians. Instead, Daniel chapter 1 verse 2 shows that it was God who delivered Jehoiakim into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Then, why did God let his own people, his own temple, be destroyed? Long time ago, when I started my Christian life, I thought that God destroyed the Israel people because they became all serial killers. <laughs> all so wicked, nothing but trash. So that's why God killed, uh, destroyed them. That's what I thought. But as I studied the Bible more and more, it was not the case. I thought they all abandoned the God and they all worshipped idols and they forgot about God completely. But as I studied the Bible, I found that it was not the case. God said to Jeremiah the prophet, when you tell these people all this and they ask you, why has the Lord decreed such a great disaster against us? What wrong have we done? What sin have we committed against the Lord our God? Then say to them, It is because your fathers forsook me, declares the Lord, and followed other gods and served and worshipped them. They forsook me and did not keep my law. But you have behaved more wickedly than your fathers. See how each of you is following the stubbornness of his evil heart instead of obeying me. So I will throw you out of this land into a land neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you will serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favor. In their question, they called God, the Lord, our God, showing that they thought they were believing in God. They were worshiping God. That's how they understood. And their sin was following the stubbornness of his evil heart instead of obeying me. Following the stubbornness of his evil heart instead of following me. How easy it is to go by our own desires and plans instead of carefully obeying God. 
That's what the people of Judah did while calling God the Lord our God. They had pride in the Jerusalem temple. They attended worship service. But in their practical life, they followed their own desires and plans instead of obeying God's commands. As God-believing people, when they did so, they felt guilty because they knew that what they were doing was wrong, but they kept doing it. That was the stubbornness, following the stubbornness of their evil heart instead of obeying God. What is important in our Christian life is to live the life of keeping God's commands. Jesus says that those who have his commands and obey them are the ones who love him. Not those who say, I love God, but those who have his commands and obey them are those who love him. We must not just do some Christian things. We must not just offer a lip service to God saying, I love God. I believe in Jesus. We must not insist our own desires and plans. Instead, we must obey God, denying our own dreams and desires and doing what God wants us to do. That's the real Christian life. God also points out another reason in Jeremiah chapter 17. God had Jeremiah stand at the gates of Jerusalem and deliver a message. So Jeremiah shouted, This is what the Lord says. Do not bring a Lord out of your houses or do any work on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your forefathers. But if you do not obey me to keep the Sabbath day holy by not carrying any load as you come through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle an unquenchable fire in the gates of Jerusalem that will consume her fortresses. It is very interesting that God specifically pointed out that they were going to be destroyed because they did not keep the Sabbath day holy. God is not legalistic. God is not religious. But then why? This was just one example showing what kind of attitude they had toward God. In the Bible, God actually emphasizes the importance of keeping the Sabbath law. God mentions about this over and over and over again, very seriously. But these Israel people, the people of Judah, took God's words, this Sabbath law, very conveniently. In their convenience, they simply ignored whatever God said. When God emphasizes so much like that, they, they ignored whatever he said. That was just one example that showed their attitude toward God. When they did so, they thought that they would make more money working on the Sabbath day. They would make more money, but, but they didn't know that once they did not keep the Sabbath day holy, they would be destroyed. We live in this postmodern era. People deny anything absolute, but take everything relatively. No absolute truth, but whatever you feel right, it is right. That's the teaching of the postmodern generation. In this environment, even Christians take relativistic attitude to the God. And one symptom is their relativistic attitude in keeping Sunday worship service. To many people, their family, uh, their family gathering is above God's Sabbath law. So they conveniently arrange their time of worship around their family gathering. To many others, their trip schedule is more important than keeping the Sabbath day holy. Even churches have worship service on Saturdays or early morning on Sunday so that after quick worship service, people would go to golf. 
Even many people these days refuse to come to church for worship service, saying that they have worship service online. We must heed God's warning. Sunday worship service is our lifeline. If anyone does not keep the Sunday worship service, that shows that person that shows his attitude toward God. When they ignore God's command about this, what about the other commands? They don't care at all. In Jeremiah chapter 2, God shows us why they wanted idols than God. God shouts, Long ago, you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Long ago. Here, yoke or bond refers to their duties and responsibilities that they should do as a God-believing people, such as keeping the Sabbath day holy, or bringing offerings, or keeping the, the festivals, new moon festival, or bringing sacrifices to God. They consider them as yoke, as a burden. So long ago, they just refused to do such things. At this message, so God pointed out their problem, at this message, some of them protested, saying, I am not defiled. I have not run after the bells. Why did they say, I am not defiled? I have not run after the bells? Even when God gave them, challenged them about that? It's because they never said, I don't believe in God any longer. Because they never said, I am a bell worshiper. So they protested. At this, God said to them, See how you behave in the valley. Consider what you have done. You are a swift she-camel running here and there. Their practical life, what they did on their day-to-day -day life, show that they were looking for satisfaction and happiness in something else than God. Their practical life. What they did in their day-to-day -day life spoke more loudly than their motion of worship or their empty words of faith. Because of these sins, God was going to destroy Judah. They say, history repeats. What happens today actually has happened in the past. It is because People do not learn a lesson from history. We must learn a lesson from the failure of Judah, God's people, so that such a, tra a tragic thing may not happen to us. So don't follow the stubbornness of your evil heart. Instead, live the life of obeying God's commands in your life. Being careful to do what God wants you to do. Keep the Sunday worship service holy. Don't consider such duties and responsibilities you have as God's people as a burden. Instead, do all these things out of thanks and love for God. 